Reaper Man here. When I resurrected this channel, oh, I guess it was about a year ago now, one of the things I really enjoyed doing was comparing the different versions of the same game that would run on the NT Mini system. Now, the NT Mini is an FPGA system designed by Keltris and built by Analog Interactive. Its FPGA simulates at the hardware level uh, a great many different 8 bit systems. Now, granted, last year when I was doing this, the system was still somewhat available, and it wasn't some $1,500 pipe dream fit only for the richest of weirdos. So because things have changed, this video might not be nearly as relevant as it was. But today we have Rampage. Now, this game was available on a wide variety of 8-bit systems, many of them simulated by NT-Mini's FPG. Rampage is a tremendously fun, simple, pick-up-and-play multiplayer beatdown. However, its charm can wear off very quickly. And I assure you that I will be playing far more Rampage to make this video than I ever wanted to play. Now, because its charm wears off quickly, if you need to, you can have a look at the description down below to jump to see the version of the game running on whatever system you want it to. First up, we have the NES Rampage. This is first simply because it's the one I have the most experience with. I remember back as a kid, I used to go to this, um, this youth center back in my hometown. And myself and one of my friends, Mario actually, we actually sat down and tried to get all the way through this game. Because you can kind of keep going if you got a second player. And then we, we gave it our all and we just got so bored of it. Anyway, the NES version features two playable characters. This is down from three in the arcade. There's fairly decent graphics. Uh, basically, you just kind of run around and flatten a number of cities, then move on to a different state and flatten more cities until the entire map is destroyed, roughly, or you get bored, which is going to definitely happen first. The control is perhaps a tad touchier than one would hope for, but I've never actually played the arcade version of this game, and uh, I noticed the control tends to be touchy on all of these versions, so maybe that's a holdover from the arcade. Next up is the Atari 2600 version. Now, confession time, I grew up with an Atari 800, so I have a little bit of trouble placing myself in the, uh, the back-in-the-day mindset with 2600, since it's a much more primitive system than I grew up with. That said, even I can see how ambitious this game is. It has all three characters, a title screen and the between stage entertainment. Uh, the gameplay also has a lot of rampage in it, despite some pretty obvious compromises. So this is kind of an odd duck, really. On the one hand, it's a technically impressive little game, but on the other hand, it's the most primitive available on this system. This is probably one for those who have a lot of 2600 memories. Now we come to the Sega Master System version. This is a clear visual upgrade and maybe the prettiest available on NT Mini. All three characters are available. Um, control, though, is a bit of a mixed bag. In some ways, handling is considerably better than most of these, but one odd quirk is that a punch, while attached to a building at too low of a level, will drop players right off of that building. And that can happen a lot more frequently than one would expect. This game offers FM sound, which some region master systems could take advantage of. Now to my knowledge, Rampage wasn't released in those regions, so it's kind of strange that it's supported. But since NT Mini has no trouble playing back this high quality audio, players have the option of making it sound even better than they remember. So now we come to the Atari 7800 version. Now, I never played this one as a kid, but my nostalgia for it actually comes from having wanted it so very badly. See, for a few years in a row, all the way into the 90s, my parents made me pick Christmas presents from the same 1989 Sears Wish Book. 7800 was basically being clearanced here in this ad, but my childhood self kept asking for one for, for a while. And the two games I most focused on were Double Dragon and Rampage. The rest were pretty great too, but I had a lot of those on Atari 800 already. I'd also heard some really good things about those two games from kids at school that had NES systems. 
Anyway, the first thing to notice about 7800 Rampage is the distinct art style. It's kind of a kind of a super deformed Muppet Baby kind of thing. It's definitely an acquired taste for sure, but I've grown to like it. Now, for my money, 7800 Rampage has the least awful control of the Rampage games available on the NT Mini. That's not to say it handles super awesome or anything, but it's a lot less fiddly to get onto buildings and such. Now, I do notice that the buildings seem to take a lot of damage before they drop in this version. Also, the sound on 7800 is generally kind of subpar, but this game does pretty well with what has been given. Overall, outside of the polarizing art style, this is a heck of a game. They say to never meet your heroes, but I think the 8-year-old Reaper Man would have really liked the hell out of this game. And now for some that are a bit different. Game Boy Color is NT Mini's most modern and probably most powerful console. It has the more, more modern Rampage World Tour and the Rampage Universal Tour. These aren't quite the same game as the 80s original, but they do scratch the same Kaiju Smasher itch. With Rampage World Tour, the original monsters smash buildings as in the original, but with some new moves and enemies. One odd move that was removed was the ability to hang onto one building and punch nearby buildings, for example, backwards. Also, so many new and powerful enemies were added that a lot of the time the player doesn't feel like the city wrecking powerhouse they should. And that's, that's a bit of a fail for the whole point right there. Still, the fluid animations are a bit of a treat, even if they do kind of come at the cost of some of the responsiveness. I especially enjoy the casual toss into the mouth that the pedestrians get. Now, Rampage 2 Universal Tour is built fairly similarly. The familiar three monsters are replaced with all new ones. Control is considerably more fluid, and this makes enemies a lot easier to deal with. One big new addition is the ability to destroy buildings simply by, by climbing up on top and punching straight down. Now this in no way replenishes health or builds score, but it does really clear levels extremely quickly. I seem to recall the console versions of both World and Universal Tour having this move, but the Game Boy only has it in the second one. All in all, Rampage 2 Universal Tour provides a fair bit of city-destroying fun. So there we have all the options for Rampage on the NT Mini. I was a little surprised that I didn't find a Game Boy or Game Gear version of the game, but maybe I just missed it. I couldn't think of any clones and I didn't see any homebrews, but I think there is an NES hack that was made for one of the new mini arcade systems that includes the third character, Rolf. I haven't seen that ROM released though. So what's your favorite version? And do you think it's worthwhile for me to keep doing these NT Mini comparison videos in a world where the system is no longer attainable by mere mortals?